Let's get to all the business news of the day and benchmark indices rose from the second consecutive session as the June quarter earnings kick off in India from Wednesday while fast moving consumer goods and auto sectors rose. Metals and non-banking financial companies were under pressure. Alex Matthew with a wrap of all the market action. It ended up being a smart up move for the Indian equity markets. If you remember yesterday's session, you saw a very narrow move. That continued to be the case today for the benchmark index, but we ended up with gains of about half a percent. Nifty 50 briefly breached the 19,500 mark, but failed to hold on to that level. Yesterday, you saw just a few stocks contributing to the rally in the Nifty 50. Today, it was more broad-based. And in fact, the broader end of the market outperformed the benchmark. So you had the small cap index in particular that gained over 1%. And you had the mid cap index also that gained about 8 tenths of a percent or thereabouts. Now, if you look at the key gainers on the benchmark index, you'll see that there were much more, of course, gainers than losers. But the top five were Sun Pharma, which gained about 2.6%, Aisha Motors, uh, recovering some lost ground up as much as 2.6 percent. A few brokerages have in fact upgraded the stock to a buy. Uh, Tata Consumer Products 1.9 percent, Apollo Hospitals and Maruti Suzuki all gaining ground. Among the losers you had UPL which was the worst performer down about 2.5 percent. We'll get to why in just a bit. Bajaj Finance down about 1.3 percent, JSW Steel down as much as 0.9 percent, Axis Bank and HCL Tech also losing ground. Now, the chemical stocks, including UPL, uh, lost ground today on account of large companies globally warning of a slowdown in the chemical space, and that has affected sentiment here in India as well. Defense stocks on the other end of the spectrum have gained quite significantly today, no real trigger, so to speak, but Mazgon Doc continued its rally up as much as 10% in trade. You had Bharat Dynamics up 14.5%, Cochin Shipyard 12.2% or thereabouts. Uh, all of them with quite high volumes, I might add. Another stock with very high volumes was Castrol India, which gained over 5%. Uh, among the losers, you also had Vedanta, which uh, was down about 1.7%. Uh, key, of course, was the breaking up of the joint venture with Foxconn, Foxconn pulling out. But Vedanta saying it continues to aim for a semiconductor manufacturing facility here in India. Attention now shifts to earnings with TCS as well as HCL Tech reporting their numbers tomorrow. And of course, that's going to be very closely watched out for. BQ Prime's Neeraj Shah spoke to Aditya Suresh of Macquire Capital about Indian market valuations and how they may impact FII inflows into India. Listen in. Uh, I think it's important to, to at least acknowledge and, and for us to recognize that. So, yes, valuations are rich and expensive, uh, despite any measure you kind of look at. But that on its own, I don't think it's going to be a derating catalyst. Okay. Uh, and I think the, the, the kind of reason for that is, uh, or, or, or evidence to support that is, just look at domestic liquidity that's, that's remained really strong. Participation in markets is low. I mean, these are all well-known factors, but I think it's a, is a structural support factor here. Uh, foreigners have come back to India despite that high valuation premium in the past couple of months, right? So I think what's happening with liquidity and flows into India, I think is a, is a really important point to consider. And given kind of where we are, I think there's no derating event or trigger because of high valuations uh, on its own. Um, that said, in this kind of rich va valuation backdrop, nearest the way, way we think about this is then say that yes okay the starting point of valuations is uh, is 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 expensive but um, the way i think about this is then to ties back to earnings and and position as uh, which which the sectors are are we, are we seeing kind yeah. of evidence that eps is going to be right <clears throat> um, and say financials maybe stands out there um, the next layer to that be could be about where do we have visibility of growth uh, even if it's kind of baked into estimates and so there maybe it's financials and industrials tying back to some of the themes which which is speaking about so I think the backdrop is is rich, but I think within that backdrop, um, we still find quite a few bottom-up ideas which we like. And um, so yeah, it's it's we still fully uh, we we still be fully kind of positioned here, right? Uh, despite the valuation backdrop. The 50th GST Council meet is underway and finance ministers of at least four states have raised the issue of bringing GST and under the prevention of Money Laundering Act. Listen in to what the finance ministers of Delhi and Punjab, both AAP leaders, had to say. 
कई राज्यों ने जिसमें दिल्ली भी शामिल है पंजाब भी शामिल है पश्चिम बंगाल भी शामिल है एक बहुत महत्वपूर्ण मुद्दा कई सारे फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर्स ने उठाया कि क्यों जीएसटी को पीएमएलए यानी प्रिवेंशन ऑफ मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग एक्ट के तहत लाया गया है सात जुलाई को एक नोटिफिकेशन इशू होता है जिससे पूरे जीएसटी के नेटवर्क को जीएसटीएन को पूरी जीएसटी की व्यवस्था को प्रिवेंशन ऑफ मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग एक्ट के तहत लेके आया जाता है इसका क्या मतलब है इसका ये मतलब है कि जो लोग भी जीएसटी भरते हैं चाहे आपका छोटा सा छोटा बिजनेस हो या बड़े से बड़ा कंपनी आप चलाते हैं अब आपको पीएमएलए के तहत ईडी प्रोसिक्यूट कर सकती है इसका क्या मतलब है कि अगर किसी मजबूरी वर्ष कोई ऐसे व्यापारी हैं जो अगर जीएसटी नहीं भर रहे हैं अब सिर्फ जीएसटी उन पे केस नहीं करेगी ईडी उन पे केस कर सकती है और हम सब ने देखा है कि किस तरह से ईडी को इस्तेमाल किया जाता है लोगों को परेशान करने के लिए अरेस्ट करने के लिए महीनों तक बेल ना देने के लिए तो अब देश के करोड़ों व्यापारियों पर क्या ईडी के केस चलेंगे जो व्यापारी हैं, जो व्यापारी हैं, जो बिजनेसेस हैं, जो व्यापारी हैं और जो बिजनेसेस हैं, क्या वो इकोनॉमी को बढ़ाएंगे या क्या वो अब अपने आप को ईडी के प्रोसिक्यूशन से पीएमएलए में प्रोसिक्यूशन से बचाएंगे हम इसका पुरजोर विरोध करते हैं और बहुत सारे फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर्स ने विरोध किया है चाहे वो दिल्ली हो पंजाब हो पश्चिम बंगाल हो राजस्थान हो सबने डिमांड करी है कि इस पर तमिलनाडु हो कि इस पर जीएसटी काउंसिल में चर्चा होनी चाहिए जितने बहुत सारे राज्यों के फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर ने जो इशू मैडम ने रेज किया था उसके ऊपर सभी ने बोला कि इस पर तुरंत चर्चा होनी चाहिए देश के फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर साहब उस पर चर्चा नहीं चाहते थे और मैं समझता हूँ पोस्ट लंच जब दोबारा सेशन शुरू होगा तो इस पे हम चर्चा मांगे क्योंकि बहुत ही बड़ा इशू है और देश के करोड़ों व्यापारी जो हैं ट्रेडर जो हैं इंडस्ट्री वो है वो पीएमएलए के अंदर आ गई है अब ईडी जो है किसी को भी पकड़ के ले जा सकती है और आपको पता है पीएमएलओ में साल सर भर दो दो साल भर उसकी जमानत नहीं होती तो मैं समझता इस कानून को महजूज कर रहे हैं इससे ऐसा लगता है कि देश में अब टैक्स टेरोजम बढ़ेगा और देश का जो आम नागरिक है जो छोटे व्यापारी है उसको बहुत बड़ा खतरा खड़ा हो गया The premium bike segment heats up after dominating the segment for years. Aisha's Royal Enfield is facing competition from Hero and Bajaj. Speaking to BQ Prime's Alex Matthew, ICICI Securities analyst Vasudev Banerjee points out how this is changing dynamic could alter the premium bike sector. Listen in. One should not be confident that uh, the profitability will be above portfolio margin for existing Hero numbers as such. So hardly the move in terms of EBITDA will be uh, on a ballpark basis. It will be sub three percent ideally. Okay. Uh, for Hero, yes, the acceptance of premium bike still date has been uh, not great from the market. So it is a first time a good model from Hero's premium basket coming into the market, and Hero will also be coming out with subsequent platform. Uh, models on the same platform so it's wait and watch from that aspect uh, for bajaj uh, who has already in its plate brands like ktm huskies and dominas etc so it is another uh, premium brand on its uh, plate and it's a sports bike a high speed sports bike not of that cruise bike genre which is royal enfield's uh, main forte so yeah it will compete with the high speed uh, sports bikes and uh, down the line definitely the next scrambler triumph which will come during festive season so uh, one will uh, watch out for that basudev then on the other side and the second aspect that i talked about right at the start is the implication for royal enfield you mentioned that the pie itself is growing and therefore royal enfield's volumes to that extent are protected but i don't think that uh, you can uh, state that they're not at all worried about the new entrants right as the incumbent you want to protect market share as well uh, will pricing pressure kind of hurt them going forward uh, in your opinion uh, i think that's what some people are fearing and that's why the stock price has gone down and we'll talk about valuation and stock price and uh, after after this sans so frankly speaking that is the two sides of the coin some people can fear some people can think that pricing power will go down volume will go down margin will go down and that's why the stock price fall is justified and on the other side of the coin uh, where i believe that 
it's just the initial knee-jerk reaction and things will fall in place in the forthcoming months. Royal Enfield also launching new models and the market by itself expanding. Mm. So uh, I won't be surprised if uh, Royal Enfield pri uh, stock price uh, recoups back this uh, loss in the forthcoming months with a splendid show in terms of volume, uh, both in domestic and export market. And that's a wrap of all the top business news of the day.